the last video we defined a function of a complex variable as fz equals to some function u x y plus i times v x y and we said that a function is analytic if it satisfies the couch the Cauchy Riemann equations which tells that this should be equal to and similarly we should have Oh, sorry, it should be minus that, and this should be. So basically, that's what we had. So the function is analytic if it satisfies the Cauchy Riemann equations. And we defined a few basic functions. So we know that if we have some function like fz equals to z squared, then basically that's the same as saying fz equals to x plus i y because remember we define the complex variable set as x plus i y where x is the real part and y is the imaginary part and if we square this what we're going to get is x squared plus 2 i x y plus y squared which means that the real part is going to be x squared plus y squared plus 2 x y I, and that's going to be the imaginary part and then if we want to evaluate this function at any at any point we just plug in a complex number so let's say 1 plus 2 i and then all we need to do is we put one the real part where x is and then the imaginary part where 2 is and that gives us another complex number that is going to be the value of that function at that point now in this video what I want to do is I want to define other functions other than three uh, polynomials and basic functions like e to the set that we already defined and I want to focus more on functions that are um, more complicated so let's talk about trigonometric and hyperbolic functions so we're going to start by defining the following so this is um, with respect to the Euler identity which we talked about in the very f uh, in the very first videos that we did and basically we have the following identity so sine of a function this doesn't have to be a complex variable it could be a real variable is equal to this and then we have cosine of some variable z equals to e i z plus e minus i z over 2 and then we can also define hyperbolic functions in terms of in terms of the following real functions so we have minus z over 2 and then cosh offset equals to ez plus e minus z over 2 and finally we know that we can define the tangent function as sine z over cos z and similarly we have tan hyperbolic equals to sine cosh so we have those uh, six identities there, and that, those are really important to know because this is what we're going to use to derive expressions for this in terms of x and y. So we want a function. We want our function to be expressed in the form u x y plus i v x y. So in order to do that, we need to replace for the value z equals to x plus i y into the function that we want so in this case I'm going to use sine of z as an example so if we plug x plus i y into this formula we're going to get 1 over 2 i e to the power of i times x that's i x plus i times i y so i squared is minus so that's minus y minus this one which is going to be minus i x plus y right and then we're going to have this expression and now just for convenience in terms of solving this I'm going to move this to the other side so I'm gonna write 2i sine of z so this is the same as saying ix sorry I'm gonna put the y at the front instead minus y e to the ix minus e to the y e minus ix and if we expand these two quantities using the Euler identity we're going to get the following value so we're going to get cos x plus i sine of x minus e to the power of y 
cosine of x minus i sine of x. And now what we can do is we can, well, what can we do with this? We can regroup terms. So we're going to have cosine of x times e to the minus y minus e y plus i sine x e to the minus y plus e to the power of y and now what we can do is we can move this 2i to the other side so I'm going to write 2 sine so sine of z is going to be equal to this so I'm going to write this over 2i and then I'm going to write this over 2 and then the i that I just divided by is going to cancel out with this one so this is just going to be that over 2 so hopefully you can follow this procedure and you, you can see what I'm getting at Th these expressions here are going to come down to the hyperbolic trigonometric functions that we saw earlier so if we can write sine of x, so I'm just going to write the real part which is going to be sine of x e to the y plus e to the minus y over 2 plus i but remember now we're going to have a minus here because if we want to take that out and then we take the inverse of that or, or essentially just get rid of the i in the denominator of that by multiplying this expression by i over i then we get a minus i here and then if we translate the minus into here we're going to get the following expression so this this is going to become positive this is going to become negative so we have e y minus e to minus y over 2 and if we recall our three our hyperbolic identities we can see that this is going to be sine and this is going to be cosh so we can just replace by those in there so we're going to have sine of z equals to sine of x this is going to be cosh plus i this is going to be cos x and this is going to be hyperbolic sine and that's our expression now you can see that we have expressed this function for complex variable in terms of two functions so the real part is in both a function of x and y and the imaginary part is a function of both x and y so we have simplified this so if we wanted to find the value of a number let's say sine of the number 1 plus 2i which we discussed in a previous video and we saw the problem that we cannot simply evaluate this so now we can because we all we're going to do is we're going to plug 1 into x and 2 into y so this is going to be sine of 1 cosh 2 plus i cosine of 1 and I'm using radians here remember to use radians sine of 2 and this comes down to approximately 3.16578 plus 1.9596i so that's how you would evaluate a complex number put into a trigonometric function and in a similar manner using the same procedure that we just used here we can derive expressions for the cosine function of a complex variable so if I do it here it's the exact same procedure so we can have cosine of z is defined as cosine x cosh y minus i sine x hyperbolic sine y so you can derive that using the same method I won't do it because it's rather long and it's pretty much the same and it is not hard to prove that this identity holds for a complex variable as well so this identity holds for complex numbers and just as a practice problem I recommend that you try to show this by using that definition of both sine and, and cosine that we just used obviously you're gonna have to expand this but you need to demonstrate this and you need to show it now just as a last remark let's see can we derive uh, an expression for the hyperbolic function of a complex variable and yes we can we can use the same procedure so now I'm gonna write sine of a complex variable set and now the expression that we're going to use is this one so we're going to have 
e to the x times e to the i y because remember when we are adding powers we just multiply the base minus x minus i y over 2 and just for convenience I'm gonna write that 2 on this side just so it simplifies a little bit so this is going to be Euler identity once again cosine of y minus oh sorry that's plus i sine of y minus e to the minus x cosine of y minus i sine of y and then you can regroup these terms as cosine of y e x minus e to the power of minus x plus i sine y e x plus e to the minus x and then if you divide both sides by 2 and then you put the two inside these expressions you can get back to hyperbolic functions once again so in the end you're going to end up with sine hyperbolic sine of a complex variable is going to be cosine y and this is going to be so this one when I said that's sine hyperbolic of x now plus i sine y and now here we're going to have the cosh of x and that's going to be the similar expression for the hyperbolic function of a uh, complex variable so hopefully this video has shed a light on how you actually go about constructing functions of a complex variable using this definition and it is all dependent upon whether you can express the function in terms of the exponential because the exponential remember due to the Euler identity it holds the connection to this expansion so if by any reason you cannot express the function in terms of an exponential or another function that we already know how to express in terms of x and y then it is likely that you you cannot find a function for that complex variable but in general for all these functions that are the functions that we use logs exponentials trigonometric functions hyperbolic functions and polynomials which is what we deal with all the time you can find expressions using this so that's a really the really neat property about these things and um, just as a practice I recommend you do more on this try to derive an expression for this one and that one and so forth and in the next video we can finally get started on complex integration and the reason I'm not going through complex differentiation is because it is really not very applicable it's not very practical it's more a branch of pure mathematics and I feel like the really big application of uh, complex analysis is on the integration of complex functions and it can actually be expanded to integrating specific real real functions using the same method so that's why in the next video we're going to get started on complex integration